Hello everyone, it is Francesco here. Welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a break. Uh, I've just brewed myself a cup of tea to have uh, because I'm going to be passing over to a guest today. Uh, it's gonna to be Luke from Maxware. Now, Maxware is a YouTube channel I've been following for quite a while now, maybe six to 12 months. Actually, probably more like a year and a bit, actually. Uh, it actually does really interesting Mac app reviews, which I really like. Um, and the good thing is, I was able to reach out to Luke and he responded, which is amazing uh, already. Great to make that connection. But he has created a video for you guys with some of the productivity apps that he enjoys that are specific to Mac OS. Now, I, I apologize to anyone who's like Windows or doesn't have a Mac, uh, really apologize. But this one actually, if you're a Mac user, really goes deep into some undiscovered productivity apps. Ones that I haven't even looked at. Uh, a few similar names, but ones that can really help you in different aspects of your, I guess your workday. I see a lot of these beneficial for like freelancers, uh, professionals that just wanna organize their time across their day. Uh, and also to keep yourself a bit more focused during the day. There's one specific one that blocks out distractions around the window that you're using so that you can keep it very focused. Uh, there's even ones that has a timer on the uh, the desktop area. It just looks great, uh, some of these applications. Uh, and what I wanna do is pass over to Luke now to give you a full run through of those apps. I really appreciate Luke coming on to the Keep Productive YouTube channel and I will be doing a video over on his channel very soon, top six productivity apps on Mac that I've enjoyed for his community. You can go over and view that on his channel, make sure to subscribe to him. And if you're not subscribed to me as well, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. I'm gonna go grab my cup of tea now, so feel free to enjoy. Cheers, guys. What is up, guys? This is Max Square, and thank you to Francesco and all of you guys for having me on this channel. I really appreciate it. Um, Francesco was actually the one that contacted me and set this whole thing up, so huge shout out to him for doing that. So today we're gonna be taking a look at six apps that will help boost your productivity. Now, not all of these are free, but I think they're a great investment in helping you become more productive and just organizing your workflow. So let's get started. Now the first app we're gonna be taking a look at is called Toggle. Now this is a really great time tracker tool and it's also a website so you don't have to have the app to let it run. But if you do, it just sits in your menu bar and it looks like this. And as soon as you're starting on a project, all you have to do is just select new and it'll start a timer for you. Then you can just click into that and you can assign a description. You can add a specific project. You can see I have a couple projects here. And if you're creating a new project completely from scratch, you can do that and you can also assign a new client to it. And if for some reason you forgot to start your timer, you can come in here and change that start time or you can go back and add entries for different dates if you forgot to track that time as well. But my favorite thing about this app is it's just super simple. All you have to do is just click into the app and select start and then you're good to go. You don't have to mess with tons of different settings and options, you just hit start and then you can jump into whatever you're working on. Now like I said, there's also a website for this app, so you can log in with your account and you can see all of your time tracking and all of your entries there as well. And I believe you can also invoice from the app, so if that's something you're working with clients, that might be helpful for you as well. Now this is kind of a dummy account that I just made just to show you how the app works, but if you had more entries, you would see them here as well. Now the second app we're gonna be taking a look at is called Cheat Sheet. Now this is a really simple app and all it will do is just show you a list of all the commands you can use in whatever app that you have open. So for example, if I opened up a Safari window here and I just held down the command key, then you would see this pop-up window and it'll show me all the shortcuts that I can use in that app. So I can open up preferences, I can hide the window, create a new tab, and there's so many things on here that you probably weren't even aware you could do in that app. But where I really appreciate this tool is in apps like Photoshop or Premiere, where I just hold that key down and then I can see all of the shortcuts and commands I can use, like creating a new file, saving, changing the canvas size, etc. I also think it can help someone who is new to a particular app, especially more professional apps like Premiere and Photoshop, where it can be really overwhelming to the user it can really help you to get to know the software and move around more quickly. 
The next app we have is called Hazeover, and what this app will do is dim the background and highlight whatever window that you have active. So if you have tons of windows open, and maybe you have different windows of the same app open, but you just wanna focus on one specific part of your screen, this can be super helpful. So right now I actually have it disabled, but you can map it to your own shortcut if you want. I just have it set to Control Alt H. You'll see that it dims the background of these other windows. Now what's really cool is that you can come up to the icon in your menu bar, and if you have a magic trackpad or mouse, you can just swipe down from the top and you can actually increase the contrast so it makes that background even more dark. And of course you can go all the way down so it's just a completely black background or you can go to something really subtle like 5 or 10%. If you want to see visually what you're doing, you can click into that and you can actually drag that slider there. And if you open the preferences, that's where you can get some more advanced settings like changing the color of the background, setting your hotkey. You can also set the duration for how long that background takes to focus. So whenever I click into a different app, it's going to take 0.15 seconds to get there. And so if I set this to something like 3 seconds, and I click into another app, you'll see it takes a little bit longer to get there. Next up, we have an app called Minutes. This is a really simple but really cool and well-designed timer app. So it has a really simple interface, it gives you the clock, you can set the timer by just clicking this circle and dragging around. Now you can go from, I think, 30 seconds all the way up to about 10 hours, you just keep going around, and you'll see that as I'm adjusting this, it's also adjusting the time when that timer is going to end. So if you don't want to do the math yourself, you just want to say, I want to stop at 6 p.m., then you just drag it back until you get to that time. Now as soon as you let go, it'll just begin counting down. So I have this set to 17 minutes, so it's going to take a little longer, but just to have something a little bit more visual, let's say I do a minute and I let that count down. It, you can see it's got some really cool gradients, and it's just something that's a little bit more visually appealing. Another cool thing is that this app will pin all of the timers above all other windows. So if I try and drag a window over it, you'll see that the clock is still on top. Now you can add as many timers as you want. So if you come up to the timer up here, you can just select new timer and you can set another one there, create another one and let that sit there. And you can just have all of your timers at the top left. Now if you click on this little music icon, you can actually set what music will play when the alarm goes off. And if you don't want any music to play, just swipe all the way over to the right and select the no music icon. Once the timer's finished, it's got this really cool full screen animation that lets you know that it is definitely done and it's time to take a break or whatever you're trying to remind yourself of. Next up, we have an app called Yoink. Yoink. Now this is really helpful whenever you're dragging and dropping files. So for example, I have a screenshot on my desktop, and as soon as I begin dragging, you'll see that this little dock on the left will appear. And then I can just click and drop it into that dock. That way if I'm trying to share it over an email, I don't have to click and drag it, drag it over the email app, wait till that opens, try and create a new email, all I have to do is just drag it into the dock, then I can just take my time setting up the email or the text, whatever I'm doing, and it doesn't get in the way. Now you can have as many files as you want in this dock, but what's really cool is if you select a bunch of files at once and then you click and drag, it'll actually group those files together so that when you're dragging those files back in, it'll select all of them for you and you don't have to do it one by one. You can also ungroup all those files if you want to. If you want to remove it from the dock, just hit that X icon. You can also lock a file if you want to, so you can't accidentally remove it. If you click on the gear icon, you can adjust things like where it's showing up on the screen, if you want it on the top, in the middle, on the side, whatever you want to do. And you can also adjust the size if you want to as well. Now this does not just support images, you can put things in there like whatever you have on your clipboard. So I can add from my clipboard, and you'll see I have a website that just came in there. So pretty much anything you throw at it, it will support. And then if you want, you can just hit the sweeping icon and it'll clear everything from your dock. Now what's really cool is it won't actually delete those files for you, so you can't accidentally do that from inside Yoink. <laughs> Yoink. Now last but certainly not least, we have an app called Daisy Disk. This is probably one of my favorite apps. 
as it allows you to clean up your hard drive and disk space. So if you constantly find yourself caught with like five gigs or something left on your disk, then this app is definitely for you and it's definitely worth the investment. So if I open it up here, you'll see it shows me all of my drives here and I can just select scan to start scanning that and this will just search your entire drive and then it'll create a really cool pie chart for you to click into and figure out whatever is taking up space. What's also nice is you can see that things like Dropbox are orange so you can click into that and see what's taking up space there. Now I just have a ton of crap in my download space so if I want to delete something all I have to do is just click and drag it to the bottom left here and then it'll delete it for me. Now it's only a couple hundred megs so it's not going to do much but where I find this most helpful is for things like your system cache. So if we go into the library here we can go to cache and because I just emptied it it's only a couple gigs but I've come in here before and it's been like 60 gigs. You'll be amazed that things like Photoshop or especially Premiere where you're rendering a lot of files can actually be taking up 20 or 30 gigs just because you've been working on it and you've never cleaned it out before. Now it's really hard to delete important files that your computer really needs to run. Oftentimes if I'm deleting something like cache, there are obviously some files in there that the computer needs so it'll delete everything that's not necessarily crucial to my computer and then it'll make sure that it leaves those important files. So it's really hard to delete something accidentally and then break your computer. I use this app all the time to figure out what's taking up space. There are really just some crazy things that your computer will store. And for example, there's stuff in here like hidden space. And if you're tired of just wondering what the category other is and what exactly that entails, this app will definitely help you find that. So guys, that has been it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you to Francesco and all of you for having me. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to Francesco's channel and be sure to check out his video on my channel. I'm sure he'll put all the links down below. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.